This is part two of the read-along for Unit 3.02, Realism and Naturalism 1. Realism and Naturalism in France, an unvarnished view of peasant life. The setting may be picturesque, but there is nothing idyllic about the activity that Millet presents in the painting. In the warmth of a pastoral autumn afternoon, two women, their faces obscured, bend low to find usable pieces of wheat while a third bundles longer pieces. So the setting may be picturesque, meaning that um, it may be beautiful and look like a picture, but there's nothing idyllic, there's nothing um, ideal, right, about the activity that Millet presents in the painting. In the warmth of a pastoral autumn afternoon, pastoral meaning um, like related to farm, Two women, their faces obscured, their faces covered up. These women bend low to find usable pieces of wheat while a third bundles longer pieces. So they're picking up little scraps of wheat off the ground after the harvest. Millet gives the women a monumental quality that conveys the dignity that he saw in their labor. Meaning that he um, he's sort of honoring these women um with this painting he gives them a monumental quality meaning that this this painting is sort of like a a monument to their work because he saw the dignity in their labor he didn't look down on these women for doing this job he thought that um they were hard working and that they deserved recognition the figures rendered with thick brush strokes and muted earthy hues seem almost rooted to the soil their skin is dark and weathered. Their wrists and hands look thick and powerful from the arduous work. So the figures are the three women. Rendered, meaning um, drawn, or in this case painted, with thick brush strokes and muted earthy hues. Um, so uh, colors that are hues meaning color. Muted and earthy meaning not bright colors, not you know, really saturated bright blues and bright greens for the grass. They're um, earthy, so they're kind of like like colors that you would see really from the earth, like dirty kind of browns and yellows, muted greens, meaning they're not bright. They're very realistic looking. And uh, so the figures rented with Thick brush strokes and muted earthy hues seem almost rooted to the soil. So they seem almost to be coming out of the ground, right? Their skin is dark and weathered, um, referencing the fact that they work outdoors. Their wrists and hands thick and powerful from the arduous work. Arduous work meaning hard work. To see an audiovisual presentation of this painting, explore art lecture, The Gleaners. To see a slideshow, explore The Gleaners activity on the next screen. So be sure and click through these links um, on your own screen. Subject matter. In Millet's time, landlords generally granted peasants the opportunity to gather or glean any leftover morsels after the day's harvest. True to his realist and naturalist roots, Millet captures the backbreaking work with fidelity to the natural world. He paints the main figures large and at eye level in the foreground and sets them against a vast sky. He eliminates all unnecessary details that might distract from the figures and their strenuous labor. So, again, landlords uh, would let peasants go out and gather or glean all of the little leftover bits and pieces after the big harvest so they um, got the scraps essentially while the landlord got the big main harvest true to his realist and naturalist roots Millet captures the backbreaking work with fidelity to the natural world so he's a realist naturalist painter that we've already talked about which means that he captures the women doing this backbreaking work with fidelity to the natural world, meaning that he stays faithful to 
what it actually looks like. He's not trying to make it look more perfect. He's not trying to make it look more pretty. Um, this is what it actually looks like, and this is how I'm going to paint it. He paints the main figures large and at eye level in the foreground in the front of the painting and sets them against a vast sky. So you can see the sky, vast meaning um, large. He eliminates all unnecessary details that might distract from the figures and their strenuous labor, their hard work. So there's nothing in here, there's really nothing else up here for you to look at other than these women doing this job of gleaning after the harvest. Light. Millet paints the figures, haystacks, and cottages in the background as bathed in the light of the setting sun. The late afternoon sun raking across the figures gives them a sense of sculptural solidarity. The shadowy figures stand out against the golden setting. So it's late in the day. Um, the background is kind of washed in this um, sunset light, which means that the, the women in the front um, stand out because he's painted them darker, right? Because of the the way the lighting is. The light's sort of going over them and because they're in the, fore, the foreground and they're so close to you as the viewer, you can tell um, that these are solid figures while everything else in the background looks kind of um, almost a little blurry, right? Because it's in the background. It's late in the day. Um, and that's another way that he really uh, put emphasis on these figures in the front. Color, line, and shape. Millet created a simple composition, meaning um, a simple arrangement, with colors, lines, and shapes. He used earthy hues that we've already talked about, earthy colors, throughout the painting for a sense of unity and to create a quiet mood. The sunlight accentuates areas of color on the laborer's worn clothing. <clears throat> so the sunlight um, accentuates or kind of emphasizes the colors on their clothing. It makes the colors stand out. The solid shapes and simple lines of the laborers bent over as they work form repeating curves that add a sense of movement to the composition. So you've got these bent curves, right? And that shape kind of repeats itself through the painting. And it gives you a, a little bit of movement, draws your eye from left to right across the painting. Meaning and symbolism. Contrasting with the poor laborers gathering leftovers in the foreground, the figure on horseback at the far right, he's way back there, uh, is a supervisor representing the landlord. The haystacks signify the abundant harvest and highlight the division between the classes. The laborers are, gather, are able to gather only mere handfuls of the crops. So they're up here picking these little tiny pieces that are left over, and there's big haystacks um, in the background that they are not allowed to have. There you can kind of see the, the haystacks. And there's the supervisor on horseback that's watching and making sure everything um, is done the way it's supposed to be done according to the landlord. Okay, moving on to Rosa Bonheur. And um, she's French, and I'm not, so if I'm not saying that correctly, I apologize if you're a French-speaking person. <clears throat> But Rosa Bonheur was born in 1822, the eldest child of a family of artists in Bordeaux, France. Her parents belonged to a militant religious socialist movement that advocated equal rights and education for women. Bonheur fared poorly as a student, however, and was expelled from several boarding schools. So she's born in 1822, the oldest um, of her parents' kids. This is a family of artists living in a place called Bordeaux. Her parents were um, part of a religious and social movement that uh, fought for equal rights and education for women. However, their oldest 
child, their daughter, Rosa Bunner, fared poorly as a student, meaning she did not do well in school, and she was expelled from several boarding schools. After a failed apprenticeship as a dressmaker, she began to study painting with her father, Raymond, on an, ac an accomplished landscape and portrait painter. The traditional path for talented budding artists, attendance at Paris's École de Beaux Arts, was close to her. Female applicants were not even considered for acceptance at the time. So she tried to study to be a dressmaker. It didn't work out. So she began to study painting with her father, who was an accomplished painter. Uh, she couldn't go... Um, to the school where you would go if you wanted to become a painter because she was a woman and they were not allowed in that school at that time. So because Rosa Bunner was a woman, she had to learn her art without the schooling available to aspiring male artists of her time. Bunner's Plowing in the Nivernais. This is the painting that we're talking about. Commissioned by the French government, Plowing in the Nivernais, the dressing of the vines, is one of Rosa Bonheur's most famous works. The Nivernais is a region south of Paris in central France. Against a wide open autumn sky and bucolic landscape, two teams of oxen are tilling deep furrows in the rich, fertile soil to aerate it, while farmers gather the animals in a straight row. Like Millet, Bonheur portrays contemporary farm laborers with dignity and realism and honors rural agricultural traditions. Okay, so the French government asked her to make this painting. Um, she's working in this place in south, in central France, south of Paris, uh, called the Nivernais, against a wide open autumn sky, so it's fall, um, and a bucolic landscape, meaning like a a beautiful country landscape. Two teams of oxen are tilling deep furrows in the rich, fertile soil to aerate it. So um, they're they're sort of carving these uh, trenches into the soil to get air into the soil, um, so that it's better for the farmers. And the farmers are guiding the animals to walk in straight lines to to till the soil. <clears throat> like Millet, who we already talked about, Bunner portrays contemporary farm laborers with dignity and realism and honors rural agricult agricultural traditions. So like Millet, she's saying um, that these people are worthy of respect for all the hard work that they do, and um, I'm going to paint them and show how valuable their hard work is. 